there, Dori Sukup here for another book gathering. I'm so happy that you're with us today. And as you see, I have company. I want to introduce you to a couple of my friends. One of them actually is Stephen Phillip, and he's the one that recorded the book for us. So if you have the audible version of Medical Aesthetic Success, you're actually hearing his voice. So I wanted you to put a face with the voice. So it's good to have you here, Steve. Welcome. Thank you, Dory. It's good to be here. Yeah, and not only did he do the Medical Aesthetics Only book, but he also did the audio for How to Make Millions. So both of them are now available on Audible. So those of you who are not crazy about sitting somewhere and reading, yes, there are some of you out there. You prefer to listen. So now you can actually listen to both books on audio. So make sure you go and check them out. And in case you don't have a book yet, you can go to medicalaesthetics.com and you can get a complimentary copy so you can go with us on these book gatherings and get the most out of this program. So today we're going to be talking about habits and another person I wanted you to meet today is Michelle Tabor. She's part of our management team. So we're just going to sit here and have conversations with you about chapter two that we're going through and it's all about how to implement and live successful habits so are you ready we are actually live on instagram facebook we are on zoom and our wonderful producer here and team and danny and julia are in the background helping make this production possible so thank you to all of you for doing this and once this is produced you'll find it on the inspiration management youtube channel so you can go back to it and review it so as a matter of fact you have the how to make millions already there because we did the book gathering on that a couple years ago when we first launched the book so welcome let's talk about habits Habits really can make or break a person, don't you think? Of course, yes. And we all have good habits that we probably are very proud of. And then we all have bad habits. So today we're going to talk about both and how they relate to the medical aesthetics industry and also to our personal lives. Because sometimes when you're talking about habits in general, you wake up in the morning. What do you do, Steve, every morning? I'll make my coffee. And then what? Well, I take it back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a good habit. Okay, I thought you were drinking coffee to get up and go, go get going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do, but I like a slow start. <laughs> okay, all right. But no, don't we normally, when we wake up, we're on autopilot, basically, right? Oh, yeah, right? You're, you're not fully awake, and you're just relying on what you're your habits what your habits are mm -hmm. so you get up you get ready you take your shower mm -hmm. after your breakfast or your coffee sometimes you drive to work and don't know how you got here right? that's right <laughs> often <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> often oh no that's not good <laughs> so i want you to think and sit down and think about what are some of your good habits and what are some of your bad habits and how do they really impact your life because truly habits are what make your life your life because about, uh, I think the last statistics I read was 45% of what we do are all habits that actually we do every single day. So as a consulting firm, we're always hearing from clients about what bad habits their teams have. So do you want to share a couple that you come across all the oh, time when a you lot of time. to clients? Yeah, story. A lot of times I hear um, that the team doesn't know their numbers and they're not following or keeping up on where the business is or what their VPGs their are, their own performances, <laughs> yes. as well as the business. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's one thing. The biggest uh, challenge I think we get a lot from owners and members of ours is the fact that they don't recommend retail. They don't want to recommend anything, no upgrades, no retail they don't want to attend training so they're just happy floating basically through the day coming to work showing up and basically just existing going through the motions so what we want to do today is talk about certain habits that i discussed in chapter two that really are going to make a big difference and try to convert those bad habits into good habits so yesterday we did a module on the high achiever at work 
and those are all were great habits they should have. Do you remember some of them? Um, yes, I do. The coming in, <laughs> getting up and making their morning habit of putting on their makeup and getting dressed for work and making sure that their appearance is good and ready to put on that display of professionalism and go get an attitude the minute they walk through their office mm -hmm. doors. Yeah. And also going around making sure the office is set up and ready to, the ready practice, to go but yeah. before the first customer arrives. Exactly. Yeah. To me, one of the most important good habits you should have as a team working in a medical spa environment is the daily success planning meeting. To me, that is one of the most important things they should do to plan their success for the day. What a great habit. That, that alone could transform your entire business if the team is truly aware of who's coming in for the day. What have they had in the past? What should they be having now? What products did they buy in the past? What products should they have now? Uh, are they enrolled into your VIP program? Are they not? Those are all the things that definitely would be things that you need to implement as first thing in the morning when you come to work. So the daily success planning meeting. But I just want to read a couple of the quotations that I put here for you in the beginning of the chapter. Uh, quality is not an act, it's a habit. And remember that when you're doing your guest experience and the type of guest experience you're delivering, it makes a huge difference. As a matter of fact, when you're out dining or, have you noticed how bad service is sometimes? Well, of course everybody has. Yeah. yeah. What, yeah. what don't you like about it? What do you think are some of the habits that service providers are, you come across when you're out dining or well, Yeah, some going of the simple out. ones that is not being attentive. So um, if I'm, my water glass is empty, you know, I have to ask or try to get somebody's mm -hmm. attention or, yeah. and at the end, you know, what makes a big difference is I'm ready to leave and I want to pay. I've got my credit card out and mm -hmm. I'd love to have that check. Yeah. And they don't pay attention. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Th that self-awareness of being able to deliver that great experience. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of my biggest pet peeves is bad service. Like I can't stand it. And I sometimes let them know. <laughs> <laughs> But you're also, you also treat them well. Yes, I'm a big tipper. Hey, listen, I am probably one of the biggest tippers. Oh, she is. And when you do good by me, I take care of you. But if you ignore me, not good. <laughs> I will let you know. So those are all actually habits that people have when in their professional life. So what habits do you have in your professional life? And those of you who are live with us right now, please leave your questions. Uh, in the chat box or you can also submit questions on social media so we can answer some of them for you. So in the book I talked about different habit categories. We mentioned a couple of personal ones and then the professional ones of course. I want to share one of the habits I do every morning because I think it's a good habit and you should implement it in your life. So after I get the coffee and take my shower and do my hair, then I use the time to get dressed, put makeup on, do the final touches before I leave the house. I literally use that as my educational time. So that's my morning success habit. I do that every single morning. I either pull up one of my membership programs that I belong to, listen to either an audio, watch a video, well, I don't really watch, I listen to the videos. I pull up YouTube, some of the, my favorite channels on YouTube. I listen, I learn, I write notes. And that's like my special time. And then the other success habit I have is once I leave the house, I go to Starbucks, get my cappuccino, and then I listen for another 20 minutes to whatever I started listening at the house and then that gives me about 45 minutes of personal educational time that I use to feed my mind every single morning. That's a good habit for you to start. Don't you agree? That's very impressive. Agree, yeah. That's a great suggestion. Thank you. And it's really something that I do live. I'm not just telling you that. I, I really do do that. Well, first I call my son in Australia, actually, at 6.15 every morning. Charlie and I talk. So that's my other great habit is I talk to my child. <laughs> so love your children is a great habit, of course. 
which I'm sure all of you do. And then the second one really is personal time, which is so important because that's how you can keep improving and that's how you are a high achiever. Those of you who want to be a high achiever. I think it helps keep you motivated too, right, Dory, when you're, you're educating yourself and, and paying attention mm -hmm. to sharpen your brain a little bit, keeps you motivated in what you're going to yeah. do for the day. For sure. Now, talking about bad habits, most people sometimes don't even have that self-awareness. It's true. Like they don't even know that they're doing whatever it is that's bad. Like driving to work the other day, this is, we're talking at 7.30 in the morning, this guy pulled up to me. He was in this very nice sports car, window down, and he was smoking a cigar like at 7.30 in the morning. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> now, that's a bad habit. <laughs> but you know what surprises me is that we still have people in our industry that smoke. Like, that blows my mind. Like, how can you smoke and be in the medical aesthetics industry? That's a bad habit that people need to get rid of. Do you know some bad habits that drive you crazy that you actually do or somebody else that you love or care about or family that they do? I'll, I'll reflect on myself. Sometimes, uh, yeah, can a good habit uh, overdone become a bad habit? I mean, yeah, uh, I believe I, in moderation. Yeah, because Too I mean, much of a good thing is a bad thing. Yeah, I, in myself, I, I'm always striving to do things right or, you know, quality uh, outcome and but I tend to be a perfectionist, so mm, learn, learning to stop when it's good enough. Yeah, I think that's a very good lesson right there because there are some people that get stuck in that perfection and they don't move on. Mm -hmm. that's, and then they can't make decisions because they're just stuck. They're waiting and waiting and waiting. Or you, that's actually a bad habit in my eyes. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> okay, customer's happy. I am done. <laughs> Yeah, perfectionist, perfectionism is, uh, is really a, a bad thing. I think you should always strive for excellence. And as long as you strive for excellence and do your best every day, then you're good. Mm -hmm. You're good. But the one thing I want to mention about you know, bad habits is, is that self-monitoring your behavior. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, they're just, again, going through the motions that they don't realize that they have bad habits. You, or you tell somebody, me? No, I don't do that. <laughs> yes, you do. We have a question, Julia? Yeah, so Jessica was just asking, how do I stay focused to create good habits with all these daily distractions? Oh my gosh, and do we have distractions these days? Wow, that's a great question. How do you stay focused? You know, the best way I know how, and I'm sure you guys can add to this, is uh, I keep my goals in front of me and I really use my calendar to time block and I try to teach everybody on my team to do the same thing, to stay focused on the task that we're trying to do. And God knows there are so many things to be distracted about today. You know, you have the email dinging, you have a text message, you have somebody walking up to your desk and you have to stop now and listen to them or the phone rings, so many things. So the best way I think, and I call that being uh, productive versus being busy. Like you ask somebody, how are you doing? And they say, oh, I'm busy. I can't stand that. It's like, you shouldn't be busy, you should be productive. No. <laughs> and how you are productive is really by focusing on the task that you're trying to accomplish and you've set yourself a time on your calendar to accomplish it, then you just need to stay on this one task and finish it. Actually, you're you're an expert in in that area. Right, sir. What? So identifying what is a true value add activity, and everything else it may be a supportive activity or just a wasted activity. Mm -hmm. So wasted cons effort. Waste, and so try to uh, minimize those or eliminate the non-value add activities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and also re reduce the necessary but non-value add activities. So. You spend more of your time mm -hmm. pleasing the customer, making things better, uh, et cetera, focusing on value Absolutely, add. Absolutely, yeah. And that way you're bringing value. I like the way you say it, value add. I look at it as in what we teach all of our clients is every employee should bring in a value. So whatever that value is, 
And if they're not bringing value, then they're not paying for themselves and they're not helping you grow the business. So to stay focused, my advice would be to time block, keep the goal in front of you, focus on one thing at a time, and keep away from distraction. I turn off, like, like for writing this book, just to give you an idea, I knew I couldn't finish this book if I was still here. So I actually went to Georgia for two weeks in the middle of the woods. The resort I stayed at didn't even have a lounge, and you know how much I like my happy hour. <laughs> It was one restaurant. Literally, I had a cabin in the middle of a tree. And uh, there, nobody, me, alone and me. And for two weeks, I would wake up, start writing at 8 o'clock, and kept going until 5 o'clock. That's how this book became a reality, or else it wouldn't have happened if I would have stayed here. The only person I talked to was, again, my son. Very briefly, how are you? Everything is okay? Great. So that was the end of that. So I hope that helps um, answer your question a little bit. But yeah, that's, that was a great question. Thank you for asking it. Yeah. So let's start going through the habits that I outlined here. Let's do it. And by the way, some of these, um, you know, I'm a book junkie. So one of the, the first habit I talked about here, uh, begin with the end in mind or think with the end in mind, came from the seven, seven Habits of Highly Effective People. This is probably one of my favorite books by Stephen Covey. He's the late Stephen Covey. And it was a number one seller for many, many, many years. And uh, it's not enough to read this book. You really need to live these habits. And when you live these habits, your whole life will truly change. So the very first habit I practice all the time. And I want you to do the same thing. And it's all about focusing on what you want the end result to be, right? Mm -hmm. So like you're sitting to do a task, instead of just doing, think of what you want to happen and then reverse engineer the outcome or the steps that you need mm -hmm. to take in place. And that makes such a difference. Like when I started doing that, I like became so much better. Do you ever practice that habit? Inhibitory, and I find that I, I have less wasted time. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, I'm getting my projects done in a more productive way because I'm not spending time wasted getting to a result that I really don't know where I want to go with. Exactly. So and that gives you that clarity yes. of where you want to go. And it does save a lot of time. I think it's one of the most important habits to really uh, do. So many things that we have to get done. Uh, I advise people to create a queue of all the things that need to get done, mm -hmm. but then take the highest priority ones and put those in the process of working on them mm -hmm. and stay with that one if you can, unless you reach a roadblock until it's done. So make one, move one. Mm -hmm. And so that instead of yeah. trying to do them every all at one time, but keep, keep it visible, keep it in front of you, and um, so know what needs to be done, what's in process, and what you completed. Yeah. The second habit we talk about here is uh, positive communication, which is a biggie. Yes. Right? And that is really for personal as well as professional. It is. For me, communication is key to all success. Um, bad communication, we just lose everything. We lose our projects and where they are. We lose our sales, we don't know what kind of sales we have, we lose our goals. Um, if we're not communicating with each other and with our mm -hmm. team members, that's a, it, we just lose everything and there's, yeah. no, there's no end, there's no success. Yeah. And that's probably one thing that we notice again in the medical aesthetics. I don't think they communicate enough with each other and the, that whole relationship between the guest relations to the providers, to the leadership, to knowing what do we have going on this month, what do we need to do, basically like I was just talking about with the daily success planning meeting. So the more communication you have and the more positive communication, and sometimes people with the daily success planning meeting, they start talking about policies, procedures, that's not the time for it, or it brings negativity into that morning meeting, which is not a good idea. So you wanna keep those positive communications in the beginning of the day and then if you have something that's not so positive then maybe discuss it at the end of the day and I think that that makes a big difference with communication. Mm -hmm. 
And, and I think, Dory, and I'll ask you this too, I think leaders or, or owners even tend to fail a little bit in communication and that they don't keep the team members up to date on, on the numbers and the goals and, and where they want to get. And I feel strongly that if your team isn't on the same page as you, then how are they going to help you get there? You know, they have no clue where you want to go or how much you want to improve over that next day or that next month, then how are they going to help you get there? Yeah. So I think that communication is just yeah. as important. Well, but the sad thing is they don't even know. And that's what Julia talks about all the time. Mm -hmm. she, she gets on phone calls with many people that are interested in what we offer, and she'll ask them, you know, how much in revenue do you generate? in a year and they don't even know those numbers like how much in retail how much in service how many members do you have and if they don't know those numbers then definitely they can't communicate them to the team right so that tells you that it's a company with no goals no vision no shared vision and that's why they're stuck mm -hmm. and it really all starts there and these are all habits they are to, habits. To get back to our, sure. our good habits, these are all habits. Mm -hmm. Having those numbers and making sure you're doing them weekly, daily, mm -hmm. monthly. They're yeah. So on our Metzpah Biz University, and that's one thing we talk about all the time, is uh, those daily calculators to track your numbers against the budget, against actuals and, and goals. And if you don't track it every day, you're not gaining what you need out of really the entire team and the entire operation mm -hmm. so definitely and then communicating those numbers like we're always telling people to post the numbers in the team lounge so everybody knows what their volume per guest is uh, very valuable things to really do and i hope that you guys will do them do we have any other questions julia John asked, um, how do I recognize bad habits and then how do I keep from repeating those poor habits? You know, sometimes we don't see our own actions and that's when you should reach out to someone and say, please <laughs> look at me and point out. If you don't know your own bad habits, that means you're not seeing them, right? Yeah. So you have to ask someone and say, please, Steve, watch me for a day. See what habits I have. And that way I can recognize whether they're good or bad. I mean, there are some obvious bad habits mm -hmm. that like smoking, overeating, being depressed. All those things are very obvious. If you don't recognize those, you're, you're in denial. But then there are some subtle bad habits that you don't realize you're doing that might be affecting your image. Absolutely. So, it could yeah. be the way you're dressed, right? The way you look. So asking for 360 feedback, going to somebody you trust mm -hmm. and say, hey, I'd like to take a moment and could you, you know, uh, in a constructive way, tell me some things that, you know, I, I might not be noticing that I yeah. might need to do less of or some good things I might need to be doing more of. Yeah. I mean, there are some people, for example, uh, ladies, maybe wear too much makeup or uh, they're dressed in a way where it's not representing them in a, in a good way and it could be hurting them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't want to go to a friend and say, you know what, you should not wear that. Or let's go for a makeover. So those conversations are difficult. But the question that he's asking is so important because a lot of times we don't realize we're doing these things. Mm -hmm. So that's when a good friend, I think, mm -hmm. needs to come in. Do I have some bad habits that I don't know about? No, I haven't observed any. <laughs> <laughs> He's a smart guy. <laughs> oh, he'll tell me later, probably. <laughs> so while you were reading this, did you come to some realizations for certain habits that you might have that you want to improve? Well, uh, While you were recording the book? Oh, when I was recording the book? Yeah. Well, the personal, um, you know, personal, I, I'm, I'm going to reach out for 360 <laughs> feedback. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, so the third habit we talked about here is to be solution focused, which we touched a little bit on that already so we'll move on to the next one which is be productive instead of busy which we actually we're, we're ahead of ourselves well, <laughs> look I, at that we're doing good i, I actually
actually had something to contribute. Okay, well, go uh, ahead. So tie, tying in that positive communication with solution focused. Yeah. Um, you know, it's okay to, to identify problems. In fact, if you don't highlight issues that have, are coming up and challenges to the business or getting your work done, you're probably not going to get some solutions implemented. Mm -hmm. So create an environment that does um, promote raising issues to the surface is a good thing. But I think in your book, we were very good about saying and encouraging people as a good habit to come with a solution to those problems. Mm -hmm. But I want to even add that, you know, if there's an issue, there's another step. That's, that's bringing the issue to light and then saying, okay, what is the root cause? Mm -hmm. And then instead of just saying, here's my preferred alternative, you know, stretch yourself a little bit and say, here's some thing, several things we could do that might mitigate it. Mm -hmm. One might be a short term and one might be a longer term mm -hmm. fix. Mm -hmm. Very good. So if somebody is trying to, let's relate this to our industry, if somebody is trying to, let's say, implement the pride system, the don't sell recommend, and the manager or the leader is frustrated because the team is not recommending, so the root of the problem needs to be identified. Why is Michelle not recommending upgrade opportunities and not recommending retail? Right. Maybe so, I haven't been provided the, the video to watch to learn how you recommend and mm -hmm. don't sell recommend the videos and the different things that you can go through. And then maybe, maybe I didn't do any role playing and I'm not comfortable with wording it and mm -hmm. getting a guest to do it. Yeah. So not having a system, not yes. having the training, not having the role play opportunities, those are all things that could be the root of the problem. Exactly. That's why they're not doing it. Exactly. And that makes you know such perfect sense. And you really need to take every single aspect of the business, looking at your team, see what they're doing well, and then see what habits they currently have that need improvements. So get to the root of that problem and then address it and make it better. And I think when you do things like that, it will totally change the whole culture of the operation and now you have an educational focused. And, and also a continuous improvement Continu organization. Mm -hmm. Which is very important. That's right. You have to always, always improve. We have another question. So it's not a question from somebody individually, but a question that I always get in my coaching calls is how much should I pour into my employees on helping them change their bad habits until I just realize they're just not a good fit for the company? Mm. Yeah. So I think you can coach, you can train, uh, you can support, you can invest in the person and give them time to implement all these th things that you're doing and guide them along. And you should really be able to see some progress. If you don't see progress, like after three months, let's say, it shouldn't be a surprise that you're gonna let somebody go. They should really know that we're, we're almost there. And we teach that in the I care coaching model and in the clarity hiring system for hiring a team they should know what their expectations are ahead of you hiring them. They should know exactly how they're going to be measured. They should know what training they're going to go through so they can reach these results that you're expecting of them. Now, in the I care coaching model, we have consequences that people, actually, uh, that is in here, one of the chapters we're gonna be going over in the future. When you have consequences uh, and rewards and recognition, and it's clear from the beginning, then you're not gonna have the belly aching that Julia is talking about where you have to decide to let them go because they'll fire themselves. You, you, don't, you shouldn't have to fire anybody because if they've had all the warnings, they've had all the support, all the training, Communication. It goes back to the communication. Communication and following Dory's modules. <laughs> yeah. If you're following the modules, then yeah. they're, they're getting the training they need. You're communicating with them, and the end result should be success, and they should yeah. be, sure. be doing exactly what you're thinking yeah. of. And, and that continuous so. coaching is important. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and coaching is different than training. But they have to want to have it. Mm -hmm. Like, if there's no desire for improvement on their part, you can't get blood out of a rock. Yes. 
And it really does start with that mindset and what we talked about in the first chapter. They have to decide that they want to be a high achiever. And that's really what it takes to succeed these days. So you can differentiate yourself and really shine. So once you make a decision you want to be a high achiever, you develop all these habits. There's a reason why I did this the way I did it. Because it starts with the mindset. It starts with identifying what we need to improve and then actually improve it. Because the rest is easy once we solve these two issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. And uh, think win-win. That's also from the seven habits. And I like to, he said, think win-win. I like to think win-win-win. So the client wins, your team wins, and the business wins. So we want a triple win instead of just a win-win. And when you live that way, mm -hmm. everybody's happy. That's right. Yeah, it's not um, a scarcity mindset. It's creating value for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if that's a habit in your dealings every day, like if I'm making a recommendation for Botox, fillers, whatever, it, I need to be thinking how you're going to win as a client. If you're just doing it to do it, it's not going to be the same. You won't be get the, getting the referrals that you want to get. You won't be able to get all the retention that you want in your business. So it and all stops. Out of it, you're helping me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to be so much better because of those recommendations. Right. So, so yeah. yeah. One of Dory's values is trying to make a positive impact in someone's life every day. So if you, you know, come to work with the mindset of I'm going to make a positive impact in my team and my my clients, um, you know, it's going to be very self gratifying and um, it'll be a win for it. Yeah, it'll turn into be a win win. You're, mm -hmm. you're you're fulfilling your purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being kind and being generous and doing what's right. Mm -hmm. It comes back to your own personal values. That's right. Yeah, so good point. All right, the next one is uh, always be professional. You know, that almost sounds like it should just happen without saying. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually amazed how many people, whether they don't look it, like, you're in the medical spa industry? Really? <laughs> so we really need to, and especially, you know, part of your team could be like that. And what do you do with that? Like, I had a lady one time, this is funny. She was getting a facial from her esthetician. And she's laying down, and her esthetician is doing her facial. So you know she's looking right at her, right? And she sees hair growing out of her chin. So she calls me up, says, Dory, what do I do? My esthetician has a beard. <laughs> I'm like, well, you have laser hair removal. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so, or they come and tell me, oh, I have this one person that never, you know, comes to work with her hair done, makeup, whatever. I'm like, what do you do? And she's like, those people, she's telling me. <laughs> I'm like, have a makeup station in your place, in the bathroom. Go help them out. Do a makeover day with your team. You got to look good. When you, going back to one of your early um, comments is setting the standard mm -hmm. when someone's hired on. This is how we operate this facility mm -hmm. and here's the standard we expect. Yeah, but they forget though. Well, yeah, that's, that's, the, the, that's the old coaching, right? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe they missed that training module or something yes. or that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, uh, so it's not only in behavior, being professional, of course we want to be professional in behavior, but also in appearance because we are in a appearance-based industry. Like, we have to look good. We can't not look good if we want others to look good. Like, they're coming to you to look good. And if they see you not looking good, it's not going to work. I had a leader once tell me, Dory, when I got into this business when I was a little bit younger, tell me that it was like an acting job. You have to play the part, and you have to play it every day that you show up. That's right. 
So you're playing yeah. a role. There has you're always, on stage. Uh, yes. That's right. As soon as you walk into that door, it's showtime. Mm -hmm. And it's more than just looks. One of your um, comments in one of your books was about you know your language. Mm -hmm. Yes and how you speak and greet mm -hmm. you know clients and treat mm -hmm. and you know speak to them yeah i was doing a coaching call today with one of our high achiever members and they had their guest relations team and uh, one of their estheticians on the call with the leaders and they wanted me to hear how they sound and you know we have all these tools we have scripts we have manuals we have videos we have audios like there should be no reason why they couldn't deliver because it is a role you're a show you're an actor or an actress all you have to do is read and memorize and deliver i mean it's pretty simple stuff it's not rocket science and so you know the the young lady's been there maybe three months now and she has such great energy about her very beautiful nice but again the language was not exactly what it should be you know, the, the verbiage that we teach was just not there. Anybody can answer the phone, but the way we want them to answer it is very specific, and the language that they use should be very specific. Because when you go to Tiffany, or when you go to a high-end steakhouse, there's a big difference between the service you get at Denny's, hey, you all, how you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> and the way you go into Morton's or Ruth Chris, uh, good evening, welcome. So just the way they deliver the message is key. So if you want to charge the thousands of dollars that you're charging for medical spa treatment, then the language needs to be way up here. And that's what we teach. That's what we pride ourselves on teaching. So it is. Being professional is image as well as communication, the way you deliver your message. And just follow. Those of you who are members with us, all you have to do is memorize it, practice it a little bit. You're done. You're guaranteed success. So that's my advice. That would be a good habit. One habit at a time. Mm -hmm. is a, you put mentioned this in your book, Dory, is a great place to you know just start one at a time and then build from there. Smile while you're on the phone when you're answering the mm -hmm. phone. It helps to lift your voice and make you feel a little bit more happy. And That's when you're right. talking to mm -hmm. your guests as well as changing your verbiage. And everything. Yeah, I think I talked in here about the Ritz-Carlton and uh, <clears throat> how they actually teach them how to look at the luggage and get the person's name and actually use their name immediately. Like, hello, Miss Sukup, welcome to the Ritz-Carlton. I mean, that, that's what they do. And that's something you also teach, is mm -hmm. having the guest relations know who's coming in, mm -hmm. what their names are, and mm -hmm. so you're not saying to them, hi, what are you doing here today? <laughs> you're saying, you know, hello, <laughs> Miss Sukup, I welcome. You? I see you're here for yeah. this, this, and this. Exactly, and, yeah. yeah. It is. It's, it's having class, basically, yeah. really. That's what it comes down yeah. to. So number eight is uh, measure your performance daily. So we touched on that a little bit already, but I can't stress that enough, really, because if you don't measure, you don't know how you're going to get there. Just like if you get in your car with no purpose of where you want to get to, any road would lead you to anywhere. And... No, we want to go to this place so you know exactly which way you're going to go to get there. So you need to have a, a goal. And you know what's really sad about goals is that they did a Harvard study and they found out that only 3% of the population actually sets their goals in writing. And they did the study where 10 years later they went back to those 3% that set their goals. And they found that they made 10 times more than the 96% or 97% that did not set goals. That, this is a fact. This is a fact study. And why wouldn't you? And if you don't have a goal, then there's no reason for measurements. That doesn't work. Like, could you imagine living life without a real purpose, without a goal, without knowing exactly what you want to go to and then measure that on a daily basis. And, and Dory, I want to just, just make a statement. One of the things that I've experienced a lot um, lately is that it, the coming up with those goals and getting your numbers is intimidating to some 
even business owners mm -hmm. they just it's they it's look true. at these things and they think they oh my god what am i you know i can't do this mm -hmm. and that's what you provide you provide the spreadsheets you provide the step by step and you and you pro pro provide the start here with this mm -hmm. and then build up to this and it makes it so much easier for you to be able to track the goals and to be able to um, get your That's team it. on board and everything. All you have to do is follow the process and implement everything that you're yeah. giving them. And mm -hmm. it's it's just such a simple thing to do. Yeah, A great habit to start. Definitely. And it should be definitely a habit for a leader. Yeah. And then share it with the rest of the team, which would be very, very important to do. We have another question. Yeah, so Samantha says, do you allow or do you suggest the owner or the manager to set the goals as far as numbers or do you suggest that each teammate sets their own goals or by department or what does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. So how we set goals is if you have an existing business, we want to go to what you did last year in the same month, for example, and then you need to increase have a percentage of growth, whether it's 25, 35, 50 percent, depending on what your goals are. And then the first number you raise is the overall service revenue and then the overall retail revenue. Let's say these are the two revenue streams you want to measure. So then what you want to do is you want to take those numbers and break them down two by department. So uh, let's say you want to do 200,000 in a month. So let's say 100,000 is going to go to the injectors department. So fillers, Botox, Kybella, uh, whatever else, PRP, microneedling, whatever you want to do with medical aesthetics, let's say. Then you see how many team members do you have in that department. Then you take the 100,000 and then break it down further to each team member that you have on the team. So that way we have an overall goal, we have a department goal, and then we have a team goal. But all of it is leading back to us getting the main goal of the business. And that's really the best way to set goals. And then, of course, you're sharing these numbers with them on a monthly basis. And it's not just good to give them those goals. Then you want to train them on how to achieve the goals. So that makes a big difference. And that's what we teach. As a matter of fact, we're going to be going over that during the Leap Ahead seminar next weekend. And we have a whole section on goal setting and financial planning to make sure that you know exactly how to set the goals, where to get the numbers from, how many rooms do you have, what is your revenue per minute going to be, what is the volume per guest going to be. So you really need to be on top of your game. And once you develop these financial planning habits, then you're just you're carrying that on with the rest of the team and everybody's going to do much better. So come and join us for the leap ahead. <laughs> so that would be good. Other questions we have? No more questions? Danny, my little high achiever. We have a lot of waves and a lot of people joined today. So oh, nice. Good. All We're right. All Oh, very nice. Uh, so at the end of each chapter, I have a place for you to do some of your takeaways. So what are you willing to do right now to start identifying your good habits, build on them, and then what bad habits do you need to get rid of? Uh, and be honest with yourself and take the time to really write it down because once you write it down, then you're more likely to make an action plan and actually do it. So that would be very important. So I have some shortcuts uh, to success for you on here and to assess and then to categorize them, personal, professional, because we have both, and then identify the good ones from the bad ones, make the necessary improvements, and then make a plan to implement more good habits. So be honest with yourself and really take a good look. Or ask a trusted friend for some feedback. <laughs> exactly. And, and there's one, th and there's a way to receive that feedback, and mm -hmm. not it's not to be defensive. Right. It is to thank them and, and write it down, mm -hmm. and then digest it. You yeah. Know. Yeah. And you have to be a big person to be able to do you that, do. to it, take it. You gotta let you, yeah. let you know put your ego in the back yeah. and. Because you have a lot of people like me. I'm very blunt. 
So yeah. I'll just like tell no, you what no, it is. No, Dory will let you know. So I, I will let you know. No. So actually, that's one of my probably bad habits. Is I'm very blunt. Do I need to work on that? Well, no. I I think that, I think that's. <laughs> I think it serves the clients well to be able to tell them what needs, you know, improvement. Yeah, oh, so no. in my professional life, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not so much in my personal life. <laughs> yeah, but we all know that you do it and you want to help someone That's every right. day. I want to help someone every day. And sometimes I cry because I can't That's help right. everybody. <laughs> I had her watch the movie Broadcast News with Holly Hunter, and uh, <laughs> Holly, the same personality, wanted to fix all the problems in the world, and she dedicated 15 minutes every day just to cry. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> such a problem solver, though. Like, I see so many problems. Like, you know, we live in Daytona Beach, and we, we are in our studio. We're broadcasting life to all of you. And it's just, there are so many things that need fixing, <laughs> and I just can't fix everything. <laughs> Start with one thing at a time. Start That's with right. one thing at and, a and time. And understanding what you have control over and well, what you don't. You know? Just like, you know, I have to, I support the symphony here. And we went to the symphony. The place is empty. I felt so bad for the performers because there's like all of maybe 50 people in the audience. Like, come on, people. <laughs> support the art. Well, and then you had the suggestion. <laughs> then I had the suggestion. Of, you know, of inviting some uh, All students. All the bands, the, the students. You know, band students, you know, and that would be good for their, you know, culture enrichment, and it would fill the seats. Yeah, so the president of the symphony said, oh, that's a good idea. So Saturday I have two more tickets, so we'll see if they took me up on that idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, there are so many things that people just don't, don't do so i really want you to gain from this is discover your opportunities and what can you do to really change it you should definitely read after you finish my book you should definitely read the seven habits of highly effective people and then the other book that we talked about with the q and the, the habit development is called the power of habit so you can actually uh, get your copy and also read that because it's also a very good book so again the more you read the more you learn the better off you're going to be so with that do you have any final words just when you learn something immediately put it into practice and then keep re repeating it and it mm -hmm. becomes a habit yeah role play it you need to role play it for 66 days mm -hmm. and then it becomes a habit it becomes a habit doing it over and over again yep any last words Oh, yeah, we have one here. So where do you go from here? If you're not a member, then you really need to set up a, a call, and one of our experts can get with you and do a success planning session. Julia was here today helping us, so you can have a chance to speak with her. And uh, let us guide you and see where you can take your business. We were just talking to someone, actually, before the book gathering. She has a five-room med spa. And when I asked her how much in revenue she was generating, she's like, oh, I do 360,000. I'm like, out of five rooms? You should be doing like three million out of five rooms. And sometimes people just don't realize what they have. So uh, Julia was guiding her on how she can implement that membership program, how she can do uh, more training, hiring, changing the culture of the company because she said she did not want to manage people. So those are the things that we can really help guide you, shorten that learning curve so you can reach success the fastest way possible. So you can reserve one of those sessions from our homepage on inspirationmanagement.com. You can go and reserve one so we can really guide you. And those of you who have the book, we would love for you to leave us a review. So please go do it either on Amazon or on Google or social Audible. media or Audible, <laughs> yes. And if you don't have the Audible version, you can listen to Steve guiding you. He has a very nice voice, so you'll really enjoy listening to it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So next chapter we're going to do is uh, chapter three, which is a perfect follow-up to complete our first part of the book, and that is how to welcome change adapt and innovate.
So I would highly recommend you read it before you get to the book gathering so then we can explore it a little bit more. Then we're going to get into the actual business part of the book to help you generate a lot more revenue. But first we have to set that solid foundation and, and take it from there. So thank you so much for being with us, you guys. God bless. And until next time, stay inspired. And thank you to my friends. And thank you, team, for being with us. Take care. Bye now.